Best James Bond movie, The Man with the Golden Micro Jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. This week's video is also sponsored by Casper. The most common excuses I hear from people who want to build things but don't are, I don't have all those tools or I don't have enough space. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make this, this awesome, awesome bed. bed. And the only power tools you're gonna need are a circular saw and a drill. And while it's not absolutely necessary, a power sander will be real handy. I just got back from the home center and picked up this load of lumber for the bed. When you're buying two by fours, make sure you pick out the ones that are kiln dried, not the green ones. You can also check the stamp on the individual two by four. The KD here means that it's kiln dried, heat treated, and it's Douglas fir. Green two by fours are also a lot heavier and they feel damp. The rest of these boards I'm using are called furring strips, which are a lot cheaper than the boards they sell as pine boards for shelving. This is called a speed square. You're gonna need one of these to make sure that all of your cuts are square. I picked this one up for about three and a half dollars. Securing your boards with a clamp will keep them from moving and make them a lot easier to cut. This lip on the speed square will grab either edge of the two by four. I usually like to use this front edge. The base of my circular saw will run along that edge. I like to start by cutting a little bit off the end just to make sure it's square. Now I can start to measure out all of my cuts also using the speed square. And those are all the pieces I need for the bed frame. Joining these boards together using half lap joints is gonna make the frame really strong. I'm gonna use this scrap two by four to support the base of my saw and keep it level. I've got a couple other scraps I'm gonna to use to run tests. The idea of the half lap is you wanna cut halfway through the board this way and it needs to be just as wide as a board. So I'll make a mark. Here. I'm gonna adjust the base of my saw to get me as close to that halfway point as possible. First I'll make a cut along that line I drew. Looks like it may be a little bit deeper than halfway, so I need to raise the saw up a little bit. Another method you could try is just to knock these thin slices down with a hammer and a chisel. I'll use my sander to smooth out those ridges. They don't really have to be perfectly smooth. Now I can test these out and see how well they fit. With the saw all set, now I can make all 16 of the half lap joints on my actual pieces. I'm gonna cut notches in all four of these pieces at the same time to hold the rail that holds the mattress. So what I'm gonna do is square these all up against this board here. I need the clamp to be over here so that I have room to make the cut, but because this notch is here, I can't clamp that. So I'm gonna find something that fits in there to support it. Yeah, that'll, that should work. This time I'll lower the blade exactly the depth of a 2 by 4 I'll assemble the footboard and the headboard using wood glue and screws. It's a good idea to drill a hole first to prevent the wood from splitting. Okay, I didn't do a very good job of thinking this through on the headboard pieces. These notches for the rails need to go on the outside and it'll sit in like this. But when I cut them all at once, this one needs to be on this side, otherwise it won't work. Right now it's down here. Rather than cut an entirely new board with the half laps, I'm just cut a little filler that I'm gonna patch this with. And I cut a new notch over on this side. Now I can glue it up. I 
cut out these furring strips to fit inside the headboard and footboard. These scraps will help me line it up. Now I can flip it over and attach these wider furring strips to the back side. And there's the footboard. I'm filling in all the rough spots with spackling. I'll assemble these pieces for the frame, leaving an overhang to fit into that notch on the headboard and footboard. I'll use this scrap as a space here. Just as soon as I got that all together, I realized that I had these boards going in this way and they should be flat like this. So I had to take it all apart. Now I'm putting it together the right way. These furring strips are gonna hold the mattress slats. After a lot of sanding, I can start painting this. I'm gonna assemble the footboard and the headboard to the frame using lag screws. I'm gonna space these slats apart as equal as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. One screw on each end will keep these from moving around. Ah. 17 things to do on a Casper mattress. Roll around. Roll an egg. Eat an egg roll. Talk on the phone with your boyfriend. Tell him how Casper has a risk-free trial and return policy with free delivery. Read a book. Listen to an audiobook. Book a flight. Binge watch Baywatch. Sleep. Sleep on your back. Sleep with one eye open. Dream. Dream about Jennifer Lawrence. Dream about Lawrence Fishburne. Dream about how Casper mattresses are obsessively engineered and sold at a shockingly fair price and how they combine latex and memory foam for just the right amount of sink and just the right amount of bounce. And the number one thing to do on a Casper mattress? That thing that was most likely the first thing you thought of doing on a Casper mattress. <laughs> and don't forget, you can get $50 off any mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash woodworking and entering the promo code woodworking at checkout. And hey, terms and conditions apply. Thank you for joining me this week on Woodworking for Mere Mortals. I hope you enjoyed the limited tools bed project. If you'd like to make one of these, check down below for a free set of plans. The more we make things, the more we feel a need to collect more and more tools. And that's not always necessary. I used to make some woodworking projects on the roof of our apartment building in San Francisco. I would just bring some power tools up there with a long extension cord. You can also just bring a few tools out to the sidewalk in front of your building. If nothing else, you'll make a few friends because people will stop and and ask what you're up to. Please share this video with anybody you know who really wants to make things but keeps coming up with reasons such as I don't have the tools or I don't have the space when really all you need is the motivation. Thanks everybody, I'll see you next week. And the only power tools you're gonna need are a drill, a circular saw, and...